Wow. How did I get here? Last week, this group sponsored George Bush. Today, they're sponsoring me. <laughs> I got to say, that was a hard act to follow last week, too. It, it was phenomenal. And I thank the Georgia Public Policy Foundation for doing that and for doing this. This is incredible. How did I get here? Well, Steve, Steve asked, did you figure out how you had seven kids? Did you figure out what caused it? I said, yes, it was a hearing problem. Every night I'd say, do you want to go to sleep or what? She would say, what? So we fixed it. Um, I have a lot in common with the crew up here. Steve and I were in the state house together again in the early 90s when being a Republican wasn't cool. And Chick and I both are from Baltimore. I, I came here and went to Emory and no, co no, no connection there between my name and the university. But I loved it and just said this is the place to be. And believe me, when we came here, the quality of life here was amazing. Seven kids. Seven girls. I've coached a huge amount of softball. Okay? And as my kids got older, I found parents less and less able to help coach and to even get to the softball games. Why? They were stuck in traffic. They couldn't get from work to home to coach their girls in softball. There's a book called Bowling Alone that talks about the dec declining quality of life in the United States. Talks about a couple different reasons for that. Talks about some moral things. Talks about too many people watching TV where, where Oprah is their friend instead of the folks at church or their next door neighbor. It also talks about people spending time in traffic. And, and, I, and it's bothered me living in suburban Atlanta, I live in Lilburn in Gwinnett County, which is Georgia's second largest county, probably end up being its largest county before long. Uh, fastest growing county throughout the 80s and 90s and still growing exponentially. It was about 100,000 people in 1990, now it's about 700,000 people. It exploded. Um, it had a great quality of life when I moved there in the mid 80s and traffic has driven it down. Now, I am probably the only one in this room that's not a traffic expert or involved in transportation. I'm a redeveloper. I kind of like taking old neighborhoods or old buildings, um, or even old town. I'm, I'm working on the city of Lawrenceville, which is the county seat, coincidentally, of Gwinnett County, and turning it into a place that people will like to live, work, and play. And it's, it's something that we need to think more about. But that's, that's what got me here. Last, last fall, late to a daughter's birthday party, I was sitting in the mess on I-85 at Spaghetti Junction and couldn't do anything. I was stuck and started thinking about what, how are we going to fix this? We, we can't take two hours to get from work in Atlanta to our home in the suburbs. We have to have a better way to do that. Now, these folks got some great ideas and hopefully they'll all come true. But I, I started trying to figure out how to, to make this happen a little bit faster than 15 or 20 years out. And that's that's how I started getting involved in passenger rail. Um, you all are a lot smarter than I am. Um, Anita didn't tell me how, how smart this group is, so I'm going to blow through some of this, which is old hat. And I want to talk, of, and, and I'm going to blow through some that's related more specifically to Atlanta, because very few of you are from the Atlanta metro area, and you don't need to hear the gory details about Atlanta or Georgia politics. Though it is a pretty interesting place. The Georgia Brain Train is a conservative way to provide transportation for people from their homes to work and back home again five days a week. 
You know what commuter rail is? You've seen it around the country. The benefits of commuter rail. It's sustainable. Creates another mobility option, another way for people to get around where they don't have to spend $5 a, a gallon on gas pretty soon, where they're not having to pay for car payments, insurance, and maintenance. Capacity. We're at, we're past capacity. And, and there's not a solution on the horizon to solve the capacity problem in Atlanta. I, I, Benita didn't tell you one of my goals is to visit every country in the world before I turn 60. Last, last week, last month, I was in Thailand, in Bangkok. It takes about three hours to get from one place to another in Bangkok because they didn't plan for people to have cars. And I don't want that to happen here. So we, we got to think about the capacity. Economic development, that's good. We like economic development. And it, it, it's a lot better to live in Atlanta than it is to live in a place that's losing jobs, where you can't sell your house because nobody's moving in, and where there isn't an opportunity for your children when they graduate from school. Emergency preparedness. Remember what happened in Houston last year after the second hur during the second hurricane when they hit gridlock? We need another way to get people in and out of our city. And rail is one way to do that. Not the only way, but when the streets are gridlocked, that's another way to get people out of a metropolitan area in the face of some kind of disaster. Right now, there's about 15 existing cities with com commuter rail. There's another 28 systems on the drawing board around the country. Atlanta's one of the last major metropolitan areas without commuter rail. This is Georgia's commuter rail pro proposal. Um, Steve, this is the, the map that you had up a little bit earlier. And this is a, I didn't even know we had this little doohickey. The, the, the line that Steve was talking about is a line that goes down south of Atlanta toward Macon and concurrently ends at Lovejoy. The line that I am working on is the Atlanta to Athens line, basically going northeast and dead ending in Athens and turning around. Rail is a conservative commuter alternative. Again, economic development. We'll have efficiency on land development around railroad stations. How many people have been to Europe and ridden on trains in Europe? Isn't that nicer than sitting in traffic on Interstate 85 or South and 75? Not as, not as private. Not as private, but I would rather be moving than sitting. I would rather be reading the paper or a book or, or working on a notebook computer than, than stressed out being late to get somewhere. It, we talk about getting Poor people employed. Poor people can't afford a thousand dollars a month for a car. Okay, if if we're not building a place that they can get conveniently from where they live to a job that they can do, we've got a problem as a society. This is one way to get people back and forth who might not have a way to afford a car. It strengthens the bonds of the community, gets people together better. Okay? Now, we've had, we've had highways in the United States that have grown since World War I. They have been heavily government subsidized. The Interstate Transportation Act in the 1950s under Republican President Dwight Eisenhower made America what it is today. It was a great thing for America. It was a great thing for Americans. It was a great thing for our economy. It wasn't paid for by consumers, though we are taxpayers. 
It was paid for and planned by government, the federal government and the state government. This is our current situation. That's me late to a birthday party for my sixth daughter. We have the longest commute times of anyone in the southeast, about 32 minutes on average each way. If it rains or if we have an incident, turn the clock off. You, you don't know how long it's going to take. For me to get to Gwinnett, from Gwinnett County here to Buckhead, I don't know whether it's going to take half an hour or two hours. Okay? For a 5 o'clock or 5.30 meeting, all bets are off. And incident <coughs> blows your whole schedule. Trains run on time. Train is supposed to leave at 9.02 in the morning, leaves at 9.02 in the morning. We've got the second, the fourth worst traffic in America in the United States. It's the largest increase in the country over the last 10 or 15 years. It's getting worse, right? Actually, it's gotten a little bit better. Good, good. <laughs> We're down from 30. 1.77 to 31.48. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, part of that is there's a there's a growing live work play. People are actually living closer to work. Okay, which which makes some sense. Um, we we don't have enough money to build the roads that are needed. As Chick indicated, uh, we, we're not allowed to build new roads in Atlanta. The, the, the neighborhoods won't allow it, uh, the courts don't like it, the environmentalists don't like it, so we're not going to see new highways built in Georgia. Our, our last great hope was the outer perimeter that got killed four years ago. So forget about building new highways. We don't have the money and we don't have the ability to build them. We will surpass our competitors in traffic congestion in the next 10 years. We will be by far the most congested city in the southeast. People will be locating in Orlando or Charlotte, Birmingham, Dallas, rather than living in Atlanta. Solution, brain drain. Just one of those folks coming out of Atlanta. The Georgia Brain Train has stopped running from Atlanta to Athens, Georgia. Stopping, started at the Atlanta Multimodal Terminal down at Five Points, where it connects to the MARTA station, then running up to Georgia Tech, Atlantic Station, out to, through DeKalb County, Gwinnett County, and on to Athens. Twelve stops. We call it the Brain Train because it links up Georgia's great universities. It's connected to the Atlanta University Center, Georgia State, Georgia Tech, Emory University, Agnes Scott, the new Gwinnett University, and the University of Georgia, creating a tremendous powerhouse of intellectual excellence. We're going to make it possible for people who are attending college at University of Georgia to get to a class at Emory or Georgia Tech that might not be offered at University of Georgia. Now, a lot of people say, nobody will ride this train. Well, this is a different kind of train. There are 8,000 people who live in, in DeKalb County and Gwinnett County in, in this corridor who work at Emory University and the CDC, which are right next to each other on Clifton Road in Decatur. They are gridlocked. In case you didn't know it, the CDC is expanding in that area by about 40%, something called Homeland Security, that kind of stuff. Emory University is going through a major growth surge as well. It hopes to increase by over 50% with the Emory Hospital becoming 
some things that will sur surpass the Mayo Clinic or Johns Hopkins within the next 10 years. Those people are train riders. They are not pickup truck riders. They would rather be in a train and they don't mind being close to other people. They would rather be in a train moving instead of sitting on in traffic. They are the kind of people who will ride trains. I'm a real estate developer. What you want to do when you're building a new shopping center is have an anchor tenant. You get your anchor tenant and you're pretty well set with the rest of the development. Emory University and the CDC with 8,000 people crying for better transportation that can't get roads into them are our anchor tenant on this project. Everything else is gravy. That's, that's the foundation of the Georgia brain train. Benefits from our area. Reliable traffic for an estimated 10,000 people a day. This will be up and running with some support from the state house and the state government and the federal government in 2011. It will run on existing railroad right of way. We are working with the CSX Railroad folks. They are working with us. They're not robbing us. They are willing to cooperate on this. There are two successful passenger rail lines already built on CSX Railroad right-of-way. One in Northern Virginia, which has been very successful, and one in South Florida, running up along parallel to the Atlantic coast. CSX understands how to do this. This is not rocket science. Some people talk about passenger rail like it's some kind of new technology. Passenger rail has been carrying people from point A to point B for 150 years. In fact, a lot of the stops along our route were stopped in the late 1800s. There are already train depots along this, this route at four different stations. It's cheaper to build a parallel line or use existing tracks on the existing right-of-way than it is to build roads, by far. Cleaner air connects our universities and, and helps with, e with planned, high-quality economic development throughout this corridor. We've got a multimodal terminal in downtown area, which is kind of a, a has been historically somewhat of a depressed area. Some of us are working to turn that around. It'll create some development in some areas in South Gwinnett County, where I live, that will help create a draw for the kind of people that you want living in your community. People that work at universities and the Centers for Disease Control. <coughs> Public support. Now, as Chick indicated, Gwinnett County was one of the three counties that voted against MARTA. Gwinnett County has been a white Republican county for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. And um, now it's a very diverse suburban county, but it's always been against public transportation. Tremendously against MARTA. Voted against it twice, once no part of MARTA. Gwinnett the, 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 the counties closer in than Gwinnett County are, have always supported public transportation. Gwinnett County, and we did educate people when we polled them, we polled 400 random voters and found that 74%, 75%, basically wanted this to happen. We explained that this is going to be paid for by the federal government and the state government and their county government. Santa Claus is not delivering this train. It will be paid for by people's taxes. And let me, let me take a quick aside here. Over the last five years, I've sued over 120 times to have my property taxes cut. And I'm batting a thousand. Nobody likes taxes less than I do. But I also don't like declines in my quality of life and the quality of life for my children. Gwinnett County results were strong. We polled the exurban counties, 
Barrow, Oconee, and Clark County, which is where the University of Georgia is located. They wanted it even more. They saw the gridlock coming. They wanted an easier way to get into Atlanta. They supported it 78%. We actually found that Republicans supported this more than Democrats. Republicans are tired of wasting their time sitting in traffic. Georgia Brain Train, a project whose time has come. Um, and I, I have to say, there's a couple nerves that have been struck up here talking about incidents. You know, those incidents, well, we've talked about the financial stuff here, but those incidents are people. It's your kid or your, your wife or husband. Okay, that's an incident. And we have a lot of incidents on the road. You don't have a lot of incidents on trains. Okay, a kid going to University of Georgia on a train, even after stopping off for a beer, is not going to get killed in a car wreck. A kid or a, a person coming in or, or in traffic is not going to get killed by a drunk. And we're seeing a lot of incidents on the road that we will not see on trains. So that's one of the many more reasons to support this. Again, I thank the Georgia Public Policy Foundation for sponsoring this. This is a great group. Thank you.